Mumuni Baumia returned to active politics in the Fourth Republic as Chairman of the Council of State, a position he held when JJ was President. Thus, Mumuni Baumia shared political space with the NDC, JJ Rawlins and Mrs. Rawlins. How do we interpret this? Supporters of Dr. Baumia say given the senior Baumia's huge image in the North, associated with his deep service to the CPP and the NDC, Dr. Balmia is the best candidate to draw votes from the Nkrumahist and the NDC people who trusted his father's politics. And will there be people in the north who like Mumuni Balmia's politics? Oh yes, there will be many. But the story doesn't end there. A very basic assessment of parliamentary figures from the northern region since 2008 will show that the MPP have moved from closing the gap on the NDC in the north to actually overtaking the NDC with the total number of seats from the three northern regions. Unbelievable, but here are the details. In election 2008, of 230 seats in parliament with 26 in the northern regions, the NDC won 21, whereas the MPP won only four. That was the NDC winning the northern regions over the MPP by 80.7%. That was Balmier's first time as running mate. Then in 2012, the seat had become 31 in the northern region as it is now. NDC got 20, MPP got 10, an independent candidate got 1. That was NDC winning by 64.5%. Then in 2016, when the MPP won a landslide victory, results were as follows. Out of 31 seats, NDC won 18, NPP won 13. That was NDC winning by 58.0%. Then comes the big one, 2020, and the MPP goes ahead of the NDC by gaining the lead in the three northern regions over the same 31 seats as follows. Northern region, NDC wins 9 seats, MPP wins 9 seats. Savannah region, NDC wins 4 seats, MPP win 3 seats. Northeast region, NDC win 2 seats, MPP win 4 seats. Altogether, now in the three northern regions, the new patriotic party is in a commanding lead. They have 16 seats and the NDC have 15 seats, coming from the NDC's lead of 80% in 2008. That means, after four election cycles, since Dr. Baumia became vice president on the MPP ticket, he has drawn down the NDC's leadership of 80% in the north to now lead the NDC. This is phenomenal. Can one also say that in the same election cycle process, John Mahama has led the NDC to whittle down its 80% lead in the North to now be behind the MPP? Well, the jury is out on that one. Some may also say that there is no scientific correlation to the MPP success in the North and the work of Dr. Palmier. Well, that may be true, but they must show how else the MPP has been able to beat the NDC in the North especially in 2020's election, because in that election, the NPP were losing parliamentary seats all across the country, but in the north, they were gaining. In fact, it stands to reason that if the NPP had not done so well in the north in the 2020 elections, today, the NDC may have had majority in parliament. So Dr. Baumia's strength in turning around the north is obvious. They say that is why the NDC is afraid of him.
But how did Dr. Baumia gain so much credence in only 16 years in real politics? It was about this. Now, Dr. Baumia is an economist and he had been with the central bank and he had become a politician. Between 2008 and 2012, he had introduced a kind of new narrative to the Ghanaian political discourse. And this was about heavy reliance on data. Dr. Baumia had been doing a lot of political talk with data. And that was very new to the Ghanaian people. Historically, politicians do not rely a lot on data. They rely on personality, advocacy, etc., etc. But here was a great advocate, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, who had also introduced this data matter that a lot of youth were jumping onto. So he had achieved sufficient believability among Ghanaians with his excessive reliance on data. When it was said that he was going to be the key witness for the petitioners, it raised the stakes of this case. And so the case was actually getting bigger. And this was the election petition. This event turned out to show Baumia as famously competent, very articulate, a fighter for what he believes in, a respectful and very confident young man. By the time the petition was over, almost every young person in Ghana wanted their son to be like Baumia. Indeed, Dr. Baumia got the election petition right. Let us put down my analysis and show me one repeated polling station in my analysis. If you are afraid of the truth, Dr. then of course you will hide behind these exhibit numbers. Dr. Bonia, I'm sorry. Uh, it's not uh, uh, very fight. Uh, 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 yes. Uh, state your answer to it without uh, yeah. any yeah. Yeah. yeah, but my lord, okay. with, the, with the greatest respect, I do not think we can treat this lightly. After the election petition, it became obvious that Dr. Muhammad Baumia would be the key spokesperson for the MPP for the 2016 campaign. And whoa, did he not? They have mismanaged this country and their incompetence and corruption has resulted in Wahala for everybody. So I'm asking all of you to rise up and let's change this country together. We are going to transform this country and all of us are going to benefit and the future is for the youth of this country. Thank you very much. The campaign ended in victory and Dr. Baumia was sworn in as the Vice President of the Republic. Currently, opponents of Dr. Baumia have tried a lot of political debt on him. They have tried to say that Dr. Baumia is responsible for the economic challenges that Ghana now faces. They have even called him a liar. But Baumia supporters will respond sharply. They say that if one can take an economy at 3.4% growth from John Mahama in 2016, grow it in 17, 18, and 19, and 20, and grow it very well, then no one can complain after Dr. Baumia after COVID and after Russia-Ukraine war. For in fact, they say that the figures of 17, 18, and 19 show that Dr. Baumia's economics was working until COVID. Here is Ken Oferiata presenting the concluding part of Budget 2019. We have passed a fiscal responsibility to entrench fiscal discipline. We have reduced fiscal deficit. We have established a fiscal council. We have issued a euro bond of the largest tenor to us, least cost, the largest subscription. We have reduced, we have reduced, we have reduced the rate of debt accumulation. We have reduced the overall tax burden on Ghanaians. We have reduced benchmark values by 50%. So, they say, Baumia economics works once there's no COVID and major global issues. For indeed, Dr. Baumia, they say, added nurses and teacher training allowance to the national budget. He added free SHS to the national budget and yet grew the 3.4 economy to 8% and maintained it until COVID. Well, Ghanaians will be the best judge on this matter. But doesn't the opposition believe that the current circumstances are global in nature? 
I do think we must also look at the realities of the world situation, the financial, the global financial crisis and all that. Um, our economy is still fragile. This year, we have revised roof figures downwards because of the uh, developments in the international markets. You know, China is slowed down, expecting the whole um, international uh, financial market. Our world has become in an increasingly complex one and unpredictable. Majority of economies around the world are sailing against strong headwinds. The world economic crisis and the slowdown in the growth of the Chinese economy has affected the growth of emerging markets and has resulted in a fall in world demand for commodities. Well, if that was historical, this one is current. Um, a lot of the economic turmoil that we've just been talking about and that we're seeing around the world is, of course, as a result of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. African countries have largely uh, avoided sides on the issue. At the United Nations, Ghana, along with Kenya and Gabon, voted to condemn um, Russia. Um, but then, of course, Ghana abstained on, on the vote to remove Russia from the human, UN Human Rights Council. In your view, were those the right decisions made by the current administration? I think that it's a period of adversity for the whole world because it's um, triggering a kind of global recession uh, as a result of the tensions that have been uh, created. Um, but at the same time, it must create some opportunities for, for Africa. Oh yes, but when it's time for politics, it's time for politics. For emphasis, the biggest blame for the current tragic situation in which we find ourselves lies with the very people charged with managing the country and not with the pandemic not with any war in any country, as has been unprofessionally uh, posited. And Ghana has been treated as an experimental playground or a family here. And I regret to say this was all avoidable. Now the internal MPP contest is here. Dr. Balmia could win. At least he leads in the polls. To do so, he must win two contexts clearly. First the super delegates and next the main context in which he must win an outright 50% plus one or else the contest will go into a second round. His supporters say that they are working for a united 70% of votes to further unite the party. Dr. Baumia may have key party people supporting him but what fascinates many of his supporters is the real political capabilities of his wife Hajia Samira Baumia. Do you remember this? Well, if the MPP elects Dr. Baumia, the show will be more of Samira and the Samira vibe. Good luck to the Vice President and all the other candidates. May they remember to have a clean campaign. As someone said, John Mahama is the only opponent they have and they must be wise about that. Until then, good luck. <laughs> We have a lot to talk about, isn't it? We have a whole lot to talk about. Good evening and welcome. Thank you for the team that put their documentary together. You will not believe where I'm coming from, viewers. Wow. <laughs> All right. Welcome aboard. Tonight is the, uh, the penultimate show before the MPP's Congress 
on uh, Saturday, November 4th, where the uh, flag bearer ship race uh, takes the final bite across the country. 275 constituencies and uh, 38,000 polling stations will be meeting uh, in, in uh, a house battle, as they call it, to elect the flag bearer of the ruling New Patriotic Party. The contest is between Al Haji Muhammad Dubaumia, the obvious front runner, Kennedy Ejapon, who came second in the uh, pre selection of the uh, special delegates' vote, also a free Akoto, the indefatigable former Minister of Agriculture, uh, who is also in the saddle, and Mr. Dainimo, the perennial presidential candidate of the New Patriotic Party, will be analyzing uh, how these events will turn out and who is going to win. On Thursday, I'm preparing an article. Uh, that I'll be sharing with you uh, about the contest. I, I looked at the contest, I looked at what to do with it, how to prepare our viewers uh, with it, and I thought that it's been a long time since I wrote an article, and so I'm going to write one that I'll show you on Thursday, and hopefully to be in the newspapers on Friday, ahead of the Congress. But tonight, we have quite a bit to talk about. Kisi Ajabin, the special prosecutor, has come out with a, uh, a clearing uh, narrative for Charles Dubois. He will go into what he said, and we'll wonder why what he said took him so long to say it. Because if you look at what he said, you will assume that a casual appreciation of the document should get him to that conclusion. Why did it take one year for him to make a conclusion that appears to have been made on a, a very basic appreciation of the document? That Charles Edouard was not corrupt, he was not, uh, what he did was not corruption, and that what he did was influence peddling. All of that could be gleaned from video. We don't even ab ab agree that it was influence peddling. Uh, so we'll look at Kisi Ajabi's situation. The good news, though, is that uh, he has said that Charles Edouard is not guilty of corruption offenses. That's, that's very heartwarming because those, those of us who know Charles Edouard know that he's not corrupt. We know that he, is, he, he works hard uh, uh, for whatever he does. And we know that he has a, a great sense of integrity, Charles Edouard. Those who've known him from Achimota School, those who've known him at Harvard University, and those who worked with him in South Africa knew that Charles Edouard is a man of superior integrity. So that was very concerning to us. And that's why I gave Kisi Ajabin pressure that tell us what you can find in the Charles Edouard report. Because we all saw the video, and uh, there's nothing in the video that is about corruption. Anyway, that's another day. Manasse Azuri, my friend in America, has also written something about um, the, uh, the Mepe situation, uh, which is the Volta region spillage, the spillage of the water that has brought so much untold hardships to so many of our people in the Volta region. Manasseh has written something about it, but VRA is challenging what he's written. We'll deal with that uh, as well. Also, 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 well, they are coming to the studio on Thursday, not today. They're coming to the studio. The guys are tired, aren't they? Uh, and uh, Ofori Sapon is the president of the Alumni Association, and uh, he's going to have dinners with them, lunches with them. So they will do all that. And on Thursday, they'll come here and they'll tell us the story. I'm sure some of the story you've already heard. But you know the way we're going to do the interview on Thursday will be different. We're also aiming to have a very senior MPP politician in the studio on Thursday to walk us through the preparations of the Congress, etc., etc., and also give us a historical perspective of MPP Congress. So all of that is coming up. Now, though, I got to head on the, onto the touch screen. And I need to carry this for inspiration uh, because this is a... Uh, let me take my phone, viewers. Sorry, I, I grabbed my phone. Because I know that uh, my viewers, who are also my producers, will be sending me text messages about what I'm doing right and what I'm doing wrong. And I completely love it. All right. Oh, daddy, we are proud of you. You'll be hearing a bit more of that. But I, I, I mean, if Priscilla didn't win this thing on Monday, I would have had a very, very terrible. I already had a terrible weekend. And. Um, and uh, I was waiting on Monday to, to see how Presec fares. Hi, John Domelo, by the way. Good evening. And then I, I, I was so delighted. Everyone was calling me about uh, what had happened. And I, I, I was so excited. That took away uh, my misery of the weekend. How did I get the misery of the weekend? Okay, so I'll take you to the phone. Monday, was it Monday? I think Monday is when I called Kweku, my producer, lead producer, and told him that, I may be traveling on Thursday. Why did I say that? Because Monday I got a text. Uh, now, these guys want me to talk about their, their text, but they don't want me to mention their names. Otherwise, they're going to be in trouble with their friends. So I have two, two very good friends. One of them is an old boy of St. Peter's, and the other one is an old boy of uh, St. Augustine's. Both, we were all Catholics, so they went to the St. Saint, Saint, and I, I went to the Presbyterian school. It turned out that I went to a better school, though. Thank you, Presbyterian Church, uh, for taking me a Catholic and uh, making me what I am today. 
So they are still my very good friends. So both of them live abroad, well, and both of them are engineers. So those of you who are in St. Peter's, you know your 93-year group. You know my friend in your group, the, the engineer. And St. Augustine's too, uh, I think St. Augustine's 92-year group. My friend, uh, um, he, he's also an engineer, by the way. He's a geodetic engineer. So one of them sent me a text, and he's here. He said, Adam, how be? You go like watch the match? And I said, oh, yeah, of course. He said, okay, so how you go do one? You get program Thursday? Then I said, yes, I have a program on Thursday. They said, okay, so how are you going to do? I said, no, no, I can come. Then another test came. Okay, send your passport. And I do this with them all the time. So I told them, ah, but you have my passport already. Then they sent a harsh text. Charlie, you won't come or you don't want to come. You go send your passport or you don't go send them. I said, okay, okay, okay. So I sent the passport. And then they sent me my ticket. And what is it about? They are asking me to, they both live in Manchester. So they're asking me to come and watch the game in Manchester. I was delighted. So that happened on Monday. So I told my producer that Thursday we have to plan the way we do the program because I might be going away soon after the program and I need to, you know, the thing we do, start the program and then et cetera, et cetera. And so we did, we, we did that. Now, I was excited going. It turned out to be a miserable situation. First, with, and I, I, I filmed this for my, my, my phone. Uh, the VAR, okay, I'll show you the video. The video that I got from my phone at the Old Trafford, it was a total disaster. Manchester United, pa. Have a look at the video. Have a look at the video. This is the VAR video. Yeah, so viewers, you can see that's the... So right in front of where I was sitting, this is the referee. I mean, I, I even missed the situation. At the stadium, you really wouldn't see what happened. We are conversing, we are chatting. And then suddenly, my people, one of them is not Manchester. One of them is Liverpool, one of them is Manchester. But we are all at the stadium. And then he's me that Charlie, you guys are in trouble already. Go collect penalty. That's the referee right in front of us, checking the VAR. And all of the people you see here are Manchester United supporters. And we're all very anxious that, ah, but what, what did they, everybody was asking, what happened? What happened? What happened? You know, at, at the stadium, it's not, you don't have the advantage of TV. So look at what this guy is doing. I'm, I'm sorry about that, viewers. I'm really sorry about that, viewers. I'm sorry about that. So the referee, I, we wanted to remove the referee from in front of the screen and throw him away. Look, look at the referee now. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. So, the referee case comes and says that uh, VAR and that there's a penalty to be taken against Manchester United. So, uh, what did I do? Uh, now, look at this. Look at this. This photograph is taken sometime towards the end of the game. And uh, look at this photograph, viewers. So, that's me. Look at, the, look at everybody there. Look at the guy standing behind me. Apologies to him. I don't know him. Somebody has his hand on his head. And that's the guy standing behind me. Look at, I, I didn't know my face was like this. When they showed me the photo, they said, you see your face? I mean, I, everybody, what? Manchester United. What? I mean, what's it? I mean, I, I don't, I didn't know I was so sad. No, but I think the guy behind me is sad out because he, he is cool. Look at the guy behind that guy. I mean, look at the, so everybody at the stadium was like, what is going on? What happened? This was after the second goal. We had just come. Half time, we were very encouraged. It was half time. We were arguing that this was never a penalty. And people were showing photographs of what happened at Tottenham, that they didn't give us penalty. And they, they get, take penalty. Well, you know, we're enjoying ourselves. And we thought that, oh, this thing will be able to make it, isn't it? Ah. And then they scored another goal. So uh, they, I, I didn't know they were taking this photograph of me. So they took the photograph. And then, uh, ah, well, anyway, uh, there was another opportunity. Okay, all, all, all was not... Uh, all was not gloom. There was an, an opportunity where I was holding my phone. Marcus Rashford had the ball right in front of me. I was hoping that something would happen out of this. The supporters were shouting, Rashi, make it happen. Rashi, make it happen. He ran with the ball. He lifted it into the penalty area. I had my camera ready. Nothing happened. Have a look at that. Have a look at that shot. <laughs> Play it again, play it again. Let me, let me, let me, let me show the people my uh, football filming skills. So, Marcus, okay, they'll play it again, they'll play it again. So they had a, yeah, that is it. That's Marcus Rashford on the ball, right in front of us. And they were shouting, Rashi, make it happen. He swing the ball in, and oh, uh, oh no, no, it didn't happen. But then, I have to say, I was compelled, uh, that's Marcus Rashford again. Yeah, okay. And uh, I, uh, it's, it's okay, let's come back to the studio. We have 
political stories to do, and we have Presec to celebrate. And uh, I, 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 I'm a football fan, so then after the second goal, I decided, okay, it's okay, let me, let me watch the game. Uh, Holland is a great player. In the first half, he had a similar header to wh how he scored the second goal. And, uh, and the goalkeeper, Onana, who had a great day, I should say, in spite of the 3-0 defeat, Onana had a great day. Uh, because it could have been eight, if not for Onana. And Onana saved it. And Haaland then scored the second goal. When he scored the second goal, I tried to capture the celebration of Manchester City, uh, just so that uh, people who don't like Manchester United can also get something. Uh, but but Holland, is, I mean, going out of the stadium as a football fan, you'd be happy that you've seen a great football. Holland is a great football. I think Bruno Fernandes is not bad as well. I looked, I was, I was watching him away from the camera, and I looked at the way he was trying to organize his people and his talking ability, his leadership skills. I think was great. The team, the the, the Manchester United team was really missing Casemiro, and um, we're missing a midfielder who can hold the ball. Half time, I think it was a mistake for Eric Ten Hag to take out Aaron Bats. That's that's the problem. If he, if he took him out and brought in Mason Mount. Mason Mount hasn't got a much defensive orientation. And you're playing Manchester City. And Gundogan is in the midfield. Jack Grealish is there. They are all very good ball players. I'm not sure why he took out. As soon as he took the guy out, everything collapsed. He really shouldn't have taken the guy out. I think that we all had that conversation in the stadium. Here's Manchester City's video celebrating their second goal, scored by the great player, Haaland. Oh yeah, so, so you can see it, viewers. You can see it. That's... Uh, Painfully capturing the opponent celebrating uh, their second goal right in front of you at the Old Trafford. Uh, I, I thought that that was, I, I thought that was, that was, uh, okay, let's come back and mourn about this one. Then, um, so, so here we are, here we are, at the end of the day. Okay, now, they don't want me to mention their names because their friends will say that they got me to Old Trafford and they didn't get them to Old Trafford. So, you know who you are. Uh, Pesco, St. Augustine's, thank you very much. Okay, viewers, uh, football, uh, sad football story over. Now, let's get into the action. What's the time now? It's, it's, oh, yeah, it's nearly 10 o'clock. All right, I think I'll take a break now. When I come back, we're in full swing. We're dealing with um, uh, uh, Kisia Jabin's matter. We're talking about uh, Manasseh Azuri and, the, and, and, uh, and everything that, that he... We'll read the article and then... I, I'll share with you, viewers. I'll share with you some of those things. And then also, I was the third one tonight. Uh, she remind me. There's a, there's a third topic. Um, yeah, there's Presec. Okay, great. So there's uh, Presec. We'll be celebrating at the end. We have a special montage designed for your consumption. We're starting with Kisia Jabin. And then we're going after Manasa Azuri as well. Thank you, Presec, for making my, um, making my uh, Monday better to clean up the weekend. I'm going to wear this when the Presec time comes. Great, great, great. Tonight, when we talk about Presec, I'll be talking about those who laid the foundation for all of these things to happen. You know, uh, human beings matter. And I always come back to Charles Reco Brobe, who said when he was running for president, his motto was growing people for Ghana's development. Human beings matter. And human beings are different. Human beings have potential. What you see at Presec is something that has, seeds that have been sown by certain people. And tonight, I would like to recognize those people for the generations of boys that have passed through the school, the kinds of things they instilled in them. If they had been doing science and math quiz from 1981, Presec would have won it by 30 times by now. Because here was a situation where you get into the school, biology was compulsory. Whether you're an art student or science student, biology was compulsory. The orientation that they gave the Presec generations of students from the 1970s to the 1980s to the 1990s is what is producing what you are seeing. I agree with the global... Uh, uh, president of the Alumina and Estofori Sapon, that we are going to win this 10 times to make a statement. Not just a statement about, about a great school, but we're going to make a statement about possibilities. Something, things are possible. We have to begin to think possibilities. And when we get that orientation with a lot of young people thinking possibilities, our country will be possible. That's the story of the Presec situation. That's the story of the Presec success. Well, tonight I'll politicize, I'll talk about break the AIDS, 888, eight, eight, all of that. But the real moral of the story is that when we put our minds to something, wherever we are, and we ignore our disadvantages, and we see advantage in our disadvantages, the Bible says all things work together for good for them that trust in the Lord. So there may be disadvantages, there may be narratives that are not great, but if we look at those narratives and then we take the positives out of it, we can win the science quiz eight times like Presec has done. After the break, we are going on the highway on Good Evening Ghana. It's going to be full speed. Good evening. Welcome to the show.
anti-cavity, gum protection, brighter teeth, and fresh bread. I'm off at Missy Wayne. We're part of your banter, man. Matthias. Sensor, sensor. It's her smile. Her fresh breath. Me, did you say we used to care of 360 toothpaste? Some me kind. Care of 360 toothpaste. Yes, Kia. Care of 360 toothpaste. It's a gum protector. What name is Jom Kasa Kasa Kasa? What is the horse saying? Care of 360 did the way. It's cool, man. Gives me fresh breath and your confidence booster. <laughs> Hey, you will see so finning to come when you know, yeah. Cal 360 toothpaste. Happy smile. Cal 360 toothpaste, anti cavity, gum protection, brighter teeth, and fresh breath. Kel, happy smile. This apple is FDA approved. Good afternoon, Mr. Ampedu. Good afternoon, Mr. Sarah. How is business doing? My business is collapsing. Why is your business collapsing? I sold my products and services to my clients on credit and my debtors are not paying their debts. Have you heard of Rosic Consult Limited, a debt recovery company operating in all the 16 regions of Ghana? Not at all. Mr. Ampadu, all you need to do is to contact them on their customer service line. They do all that. I recommend Rosic Consult Limited, a debt recovery company to financial institutions, businessmen and businesswomen, other companies, and also individuals. Rosic Consult has 98.4% debt recovery rate. We have professional debt recovery managers. You are assured of swift debt recovery. No recovery no commission for Rossi Consult Limited, no more write offs, and we pre finance the recovery ourselves. Enjoy the fruits of your labor, they say. But as humans, aging and physical infirmity stands our way of enjoying our mansions and homes. It often becomes challenging, if not impossible, to use our stairways day in, day out. With portable American pneumatic vacuum elevators, PVEs, you are assured of unlimited enjoyment of your mansions and homes. It's a self-supported elevator for vertical movement of humans and goods at homes and offices. The original comes in three custom-made models with wheelchair accessibility call it luxury but it's a necessary imperative for vertical mobility do not let aging or infirmity limit you get one for your easy vertical mobility at home it's affordable and can be installed in just three days without modification to your existing building it's however easier to incorporate it at the construction stage we also have traditional fuji elevators and escalators for your high-rise buildings and malls visit lifts and elevators company limited at sakumono for your elevators nationwide for free consultation to call or whatsapp us on 0200-535-515 lifts and elevators the elevator people betway is your gateway to a theme park full of gaming excitement a whirlpool of wonder where your favorite games come to life where you can take to the skies with max payouts that reach into the millions all in the palm of your hand. Visit betway.com.gh. Terms and conditions apply. Betway is regulated by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. No under 18. Bet responsibly. Betway. Bet your way. For over 20 years of serving the world with herbal and alternative medicine, we've been successful in treating complicated medical conditions with a perfect combination of herbal and alternative methods of treatments like homeopathy, naturopathy, reflexology, and many more. We deliver excellent and effective service to people from all walks of life through scientific and traditional means. We have a well-equipped laboratory with advanced diagnostic and treatment devices to help detect your illness so we know the right medication to be given at Amen Scientific Herbal and Alternative Medical Hospital. We are proud manufacturers of our own herbal medication. Our zeal and passion to save lives with our patients at heart and outstanding achievements since 1996 has won us several awards. That is why we say, go herbal, go Amen. We are located everywhere in all the regions. Amen Scientific Herbal and Alternative Medical Hospital. Allahu Shafi. God is the
prepare yourself to unleash even more moolah by staking from one Ghana city to 350 Ghana cities. And you could win 26 times your stake on the exciting new pick one game from Game Park. Play by dialing star 946 hash on all networks via our website or download the Game Park app on www.gameparkgames.com. Choose your pick one number from 1 to 36. Place your stake and watch our live draws on Adum TV at 9 a.m., 12 p.m., and 6 p.m. daily. Hey, live light like me with Game Park. Game Park, more mula, more power. This game is regulated by the National Lottery Authority, not for persons under 18. Play responsibly. My son, there's more blessing in giving than receiving. Kwa, when you fear for you now, and Kobo the makers in Sri Lanka, the pneumatological abrasion of the Lord revealed unto me this night that me and my household should go out into the world and bless the world. Makers Electronics Company Limited am up to 67% discount. I was selected appliances as well. This is what I call quintessential immaculability. She said the Makers Electronics Company Limited. I will tie for Burkina Highway. I'm a Samayzongo Junction. I decay for my sedan. Oh, yeah, Fat Herman, Boga Junction. Ashaman, Falco Flat, Kumasi, Ahinema Koko Bain, Asafu Bwachi Hospital Junction. Takwani, Efiye Kuma, Number 9 Market. Two and two man and dad, about the maker's blessing attack for us. From 0552-222-253 and 0552-222-254. Terms and conditions apply. The same in Gato Muna Messiasi. In life, choice is good, but choice plus safety is way better. Your safety and comfort is paramount. Under the cylinder recirculation model, you can buy LPG in a safe environment. All cylinders are inspected and maintained to the best safety standards, so your safety is assured. Just take your empty cylinder to the nearest exchange point and swap it for a filled cylinder. Different cylinder sizes will be available to meet your pocket size. Imagine cooking in a smoke-free environment. This will improve the health and well-being of you and your family. Choose LPG in a safer model of distribution. Cylinder recirculation model. Securing your safety. Creating more jobs. A message from the National Petroleum Authority under the patronage of the Ministry of Energy. All right, hi. Do you have text messages already? Uh, okay, let's see what you got, and then uh, we can go on the uh, firing uh, track. Good evening again. Welcome. Uh, so let's start with Fatih then. Yeah. Okay, Fatih, what do you have? Okay, so I have messages on the documentary you made on Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, and this is coming from Dustin Cohen, and he says, John Dramani Mahama thinks Ghanaians living in Ghana are illiterate, so he decides to see the truth outside and lies when he's at home. Coming from Gumzoyo, he says, Good evening, Paul. Keep doing your best for Mother Ghana. Marigaswa, incoming leader of our great NPP and president to be sworn into office coming 2025, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Coming from Nash Ghana, he says, the chosen one, best to lead is Baumia, breaking the eight as possible. Coming from Ali Elijah, he says, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia is winning. We shall take another seat from Salaga South in 2024, inshallah. Coming from Loba Falls, Corbin, he says, Kennedy Japan says the increase in the NPP seat in North cannot be credited to Dr. Baumia because he made a lot of donations to almost every constituency up to the north. And lastly, coming from Nana Okata Chase says, every well-meaning patriot must vote, must vote for the great doctor. He is the best choice for Ghana after Nana Adu. Antoinette. So here are a few things people had to say about the campaign by Hajar Samira. Safia Nufambali says, Hajja Samira is the Hillary Clinton of Ghana. May Allah bless you, mommy. Next first lady of the Republic of Ghana come 2024. 
Yao Marvin says, talking of women in politics, Paul, I would like to greet the incoming MP for Kwesi Minton constituency, Mrs. Yapukwa Baden, deputy CEO of NHIA, who is doing fantastically very well with her social empowerment program, and Madam Homa, the deputy director general of NLA. Now back to the contents of the documentary we showed earlier. People are really throwing admiration to Paul. Um, Joe Elam is no exception. He says, wow, best political talk show ever. Good job, Paul. Prince Emba says, spending time with you is like taking the Holy Communion. I would never miss it for anything. Dennis Boachi says, but I don't think with Dr. Baumia, NPP can break the aid because the youth are saying that no can, no vote, and knowing very well that the youth constitutes about 65% of the eligible voters, I do not think Dr. Baumia will make the, the cut. Elam Kwame Phillips says, Kennedy Japan has helped to make this race a tough race, I must admit. But, all, but we all know that he is not going to win the flag bearer position. It is Dr. Baumia's time to lead the NPP to victory. Odeneho Ajiman says, Paul, please, I need you to train me. You are super extra ordinary. And lastly, Stephen Tufor says, if you want the NPP to break the eight, press one. If you want NPP to go to opposition, then press two. The choice is on the thumb. Angelo. Well, we have from Master Planner watching us from Ken Tampo. He says, the candidate that the NDC fear most is Dr. Baumia. They can't sleep because of Dr. Baumia. Uh, the NPP delegates, if you want to break the eight, then let's vote for it massively. We also have, again, from Elam Kwame Phillips. Now, he says that Kennedy Echepong is not presidential. A president must be temperate, cool-headed, and mature in the way he or she handles national issues. He or she must be an embodiment of enduring values, wisdom, endurance, and humility. Kennedy must take time to nurture his presidential ambitions. Moving on, Emmanuel Martin Oredu Obrimpong says, uh, he's watching us from Kwehuta for greetings to you. He says, no two ways that the truth will be told. We're winning the 2024 elections, like I always say, with the right and perfect candidates. If you know, you know it's sealed, breaking the eight. Now, we have from Obama watching us from Kwehu Tafo. He says, as Prasek has broken the eight in NSFQ, so shall the NPP break the eight in 2024. Every weapon that will rise up against Baumea will be trampled upon on November 4. He is winning a big to send a signal to everyone that the MPP is poised for victory 2024. And uh, back to you, Paul. Okay, so uh, that's, that's how it goes. Now, over the weekend also, uh, our friend uh, Azuri published an article. And uh, I have cause to discuss it. And uh, forgive me, viewers, I'll not be that long. So, and uh, viewers, the reason why I'm concerned about these things is that this is the work that we all do. We are journalists, isn't it? Or we are news reporters. When people do things that make the profession look awkward, it's a concern for me because I've, I've been doing this much longer than he's been doing it. And, uh, and people have been doing it much longer than I have been doing it. And if you do these things and people say, oh, as for Ghanaian journalists, yeah, as for Ghanaian journalists, yeah. The guy is doing the productive work in America and then he spews out an article accusing agencies of state of awarding a contract. And then the agency comes out and says, I have not awarded any contract. I mean, that's, that's, that's so bad for the, for the image of the profession. At this time, over the last 10 years, when the profession is picking up, the image of the profession gradually is picking up. Once in a while, with the major mistakes are made. I discussed it here the other day. And then this is a senior journalist, well-respected. He spews out something. And then the people say that I have not awarded any contract. Then you come back to the basics. These are people who have been formally trained in journalism. Some of us were not formally trained in journalism. We learned it in a newsroom. These are people who have been to a journalism school and they have been formally trained in journalism. And then he sits and writes an article without any shred of evidence about what he's writing about. That, that affects and denigrates the profession. It affects and denigrates the image of journalism. That's why people will say that journalists are A, B, C, D. That's why they will say that your journalists are useless. Oh, as for Ghanaian journalists, they respect British journalists, but they don't respect Ghanaian journalists because of these kinds of things. You've gone to journalism school. You're a high-profile journalist. You publish an article without knowing whether a contract has been awarded or not that somebody told you. You see, this guy, somebody told me, somebody told me things. When I used to work at the BBC in 2001, they warned us those days, uh, Robin White, that, look, when you are a journalist, big corporates who, are, who have something to hide, they really don't like you. So sometimes they get some of them.
to call you and say, hey, look, look, we have done this and this. We have a story. Be very careful about those things because when you publish it, they'll sue you in libel and then they shut you up. So be very careful about those things. Be very careful, Robin White said, about people telling you something. Even here in the studio, my producers will tell you. I will tell them that if I have not seen it, I don't want it on the touch screen. I have sent a document to my producers. Have a work on this because I've not, I've not looked at it. Just, it's one happened right now. Just the last two minutes here, it happened. Just as I was getting off the plane, uh, I got a, a, a WhatsApp message. I think it was a broadcast from Mr. Bosman Asari, the Deputy Electoral Commission. I think he broadcasted to all his WhatsApp. And it is a document about creating 25 new constituencies. So I saw it on the aircraft. And then I started going to Facebook to see whether there's reaction to it. And I saw people reacting to it. Then I, I couldn't open it. So I sent it out. They just came to tell me that they've been able to open Bosman Asari's thing. Should they put it on? I said, no, no, I have to read it. I have not, if I have not seen it, it doesn't come here. As simple as that, I sent it to them. So even that, if I have not had a proper look at it, I don't put it out. You sit down there and you say, VRA have awarded a contract. And then you use all sorts of insulting and abusive words about the people who awarded a contract. You even call them foolish. And then it turns out that hours later, VRA says, we haven't awarded any contract. So you haven't seen a contract awarded by VRA to Zoom Lion. But because of your hatred for Zoom Lion, then you go ahead with the contract. Let's, let's see what he said. Let's see what he said. All right. Manasseh Azuri says as follows. The Volta River Authority has contracted Zoom Lion to undertake fumigation of the areas affected by the disaster. I don't know the level of intelligence or foolishness that went into the VRS decision. But I have enough evidence to prove that fumigation has become an avenue through which government officials connive with Zoom Lion to loot state resources. And he says, check the comments. Okay, now look at his introductory paragraph. The VRA has. So you are a journalist. You are giving information to people. You are making an allegation. You don't even suggest that you are alleging. You don't suggest that the VRA is preparing to do so. You actually say that the VRA has. Why is he saying that? Because he heard it. He heard it from somewhere. And because he heard it from somewhere... And because he has a hatred for Zoom Lion, for whatever reason, I don't know. Zoom Lion is far older than him. But he just hates the man for some reason. He was hoping, as he himself has told people, that when power changes, Zoom Lion will go to jail. He is not the Supreme Court. He's not the High Court. He's not the Court of Appeal. He's not the one who determines how people go to jail. You see, these things we do in Ghana without understanding how it works. That somebody go to jail, go to jail. It has not, that's what the Attorney General says that. It's not that I don't know that Galamsey exists. I have jailed Galamsey people. But what Frimpon Boatin brought, I cannot take it to court. Because the court is there to protect the, the citizens of Ghana. And the courts are in every country to protect the citizens of those countries. So the court says that if you bring somebody here for a criminal trial, you have to make sure that you have ticked the following boxes. A, B, C, D, E. If you don't tick those boxes, it is not to say that a person has done it or has not done it. It is to suggest that there's not enough evidence to take the person's freedom by putting him in prison through a prosecution. That's the position of the law. And by now, every journalist understands that. So he sits down and feels that they should have jailed Zoom Lion because you, are, you have a problem with him because you went to him and said all of us should leave the room and you and him alone. I'll say it again. Manasseh came to Zoom Lion. He said I shouldn't be there. Coleman shouldn't be there. Only him wants to meet Zoom Lion. Zoom Lion said I won't meet you alone. That's where the problem started. The crassness of his journalistic, journalistic work, that's where it started. So you sit down there and publish something. And Professor Kwame Karikai, I'll mention his name again. It's a disappointment. Professor Kwame Karikai, it's a disappointment. To support journalism work like that. Professor Kwame Karikai, you were at the University of Ghana when PAV and Sun was there. Is that what PAV and Sun taught us? That we should publish something that we don't know where it's coming from. We just publish. You come and say that VRA has contracted Zoom Lion. To undertake fumigation of the areas affected by the disaster. I don't know the level of intelligence or foolishness. That's just disrespect. It shows that Manasseh is a badly brought up child. It's so disrespectful, you write about VRA intelligence and foolishness. That means you are not well brought up. He was not well brought up. I'm sorry for him. He was completely no, you should read his Bible. If you read your Bible, you won't read, you won't say these things. That I don't know the level of intelligence or foolishness that went into VRA's decisions. The engineers that sit at VI, do you think you are more sensible than them? You, Manasseh, you think that the engineers at VRA, the management of VRA, the board of directors of VRA, you are more sensible than them. You, Manasseh, you are more sensible than them. 
I'm not saying they are more sensible than you, but I'm saying that you are also not more sensible than them. You do your work, they do their work. You have to give them the respect. And you, you can even allege it, but you come and write, I don't know the level of intelligence or foolishness that went into VRA. Who do you think you are to call people a VRA foolish? They have not called you foolish. They have not called anybody foolish. They are doing their work. And then you sit there and say that people at VRA are foolish. Manasseh, he says that people at VRA are foolish. He doesn't know the foolishness in their head. The VRA legal department, VRA engineering department, these VRA people who have held a Kosombo forever, generations after generations, they have always recruited a top standard. VRA has always demonstrated as one of Ghanaian companies since Kwame Kuma's days because of the foundations laid to create this top standard of engineering for us. You, Manasseh, Manasseh Azuri, says that VRA people, he doesn't know how the, the level of intelligence or foolishness that went into the dead. He's questioning the VRA decision and he's calling it foolish. A decision, in fact, VRA says they have not made. They have not made that decision. They have not given any contract to anybody. And then you sit down and because you have heard, you, he's just heard it in his ears. These are the things that give journalism a bad name. This is not how journalism is supposed to be practiced. And who do you blame? Professor Kwame Karikari. It is him. With much respect to him, Professor Kwame Karikari is yet a disappointment. Professor Kwame Karikari has done a great job for journalism. Nobody can take that away from him. Professor Karikari has done a great job for journalism. Recently, he was a the chairman of the board of the graphic. Fantastic man. But this is work with Manasse is disappointing. Why do I say that it's basic and it's fundamental? Manasse publishes something about Professor Kwame Karikari. Did he read this language and thought that it was okay? He, Professor Kwame Kai, I've never heard him use this language before. I've never heard Kwame Kai Kai, Bona Kumsin, Audrey Gajepo, PAV and Sam use this kind of crass language in addressing other people. And Kwame Kai Kai supports Manasseh Azuri to call the people at VRA foolish. Who does he think he is? This is what I call once again the delusions of self grandeur. He thinks he's some grandiose man. You, the people at VRA, do you know what they know? Do you know what they have learned? Do you know what, what the processes that you didn't succeed in going through? They went through it. And he knows what I'm talking about. I'll say it again. The processes that you, Manasseh, you didn't succeed in going through, the VRA engineers succeed. That's why they are engineers from VRA. And that's why you went to journalism school. Because you didn't cross the line. And you come and sit here and call them foolish. You couldn't even cross the line. So you went to journalism school. And that's the, that's the tragedy they've fallen upon us. When you can't cross the line, they say go to journalism school. In England, you have to cross the line better than the engineers to become a journalist. In America, I told you viewers, Google it again. Google all CNN reporters, Anderson Cooper, everybody. You'll find Harvard JD, Harvard JD, Harvard JD. The same Harvard JD people are in America's VRA. The same Harvard JD people are in America's Congress. They are in the House and they are in the Senate. The same Harvard JDs are in the Supreme Court so that American society is standardized. The journalist is the, is the foundation of society. The journalist is the sounding board of society. The journalist determines how development is going. We hear, we say that, no, 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 to be a journalist, low it. That must change. And if, it, if that wasn't there, Manasseh will not be a journalist. He will not be. If that wasn't there, and that is the problem we have had. But he's a great guy. Everybody has potential. Nonetheless, he can still learn, but when he's refusing to learn, we'll point it out to him that he's not doing injustice just to himself, he's doing injustice to the profession, and he's doing injustice to the generations that have to come to come and try and change the image of Ghanaian journalism. Those generations, he's making their work difficult because of his selfishness and his parochial attitude and his hatred. Hatred shows on people's faces. You see, when you see people who have hatred in them, when you hate, it doesn't affect the person you hate, it affects you yourself. So when you see the people's face, you can tell that this is an unhappy soul. His hate, hatred is full in his heart. He has too much hatred in his heart. So he's an unhappy soul. You can tell it from their image. You can just tell it from their image. How can you call the engineers at VRA? You don't know the level of intelligence or foolishness that went into the VRA decision. Okay, let's put the VRA statement on now. Let's put the VRA statement on. Please get the VRA statement. Just... Uh, and put the VRA statement. I'm going to, okay, yeah, so here's the VRA statement. All right, it's as follows. It's a press release, and it's as follows. The attention of the management of the Volta River Authority has been drawn to a story in the electronic media that VRA has contracted Zoom Lion to undertake fumigation of areas affected by, by the controlled spillage 
from the Akosom Boat Dam. We wish to state that the VRA has not, has not awarded any contract to Zoom Lion for the fumigation of communities impacted by the control spillage. VRA acknowledges the assistance being offered by institutions, companies, groups, and individuals, and will continue to work with all stakeholders in our relief efforts for the communities impacted by the controlled spillage from the Akonsombo Dam, and is issued by the Corporate Affairs and External Relations Unit, uh, dates October 30. This is VRA speaking, viewers, for those viewers who did not agree with me. This is VRA speaking. They said, and I quote, we wish to state that VRA has not. So a journalist of the level of Azuri says that VRA has. And VRA comes and says, we have not. And so tomorrow, when I, as a journalist, says that ECG has awarded a contract to Kofi Bedu, you will say, Ghanaian journalist, again, no, a Ghanaian journalist, is he sure? Is he sure what he's talking about? You are eroding the credibility of the work. As an individual with your parochial selfishness and hatred, Manasseh, put Manasseh's photograph there again. Manasseh is eroding the confidence of the work. Because he said, VRA has awarded a contract. VRA comes and says, I have not awarded any contract. And on top of VRA awarding a contract, he proceeded to insult them. That he doesn't know the level of intelligence or foolishness that went into the decision. Accusing VRA of being foolish to have made a decision that the VRA says, we have not actually made. Does he not deserve to apologize to VRA and all the engineers there, the hardworking engineers who have gone through JSS, have gone through SSS. Most likely they got eight A's at SSS. They studied physics, chemistry, biology. They went to KNUST. They studied civil engineering, electrical I respect those people. I was in Presec. So I understand the value of engineers. Maybe he doesn't understand it. Maybe if you know how engineers become engineers, you have to get A in maths, additional maths. You have to get A in physics. You have to get A in chemistry. That a person who gets A in physics, chemistry, maths, you, 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 you come and stand there and say he's foolish. Maybe if he went to Presec, he will understand how people become engineers and how people become doctors, how the sciences turn around. You have to become a lawyer. You have to get A in government. You have to get A in RS. You have to get A in economics. And when you finish, this guy will come and tell you that you are foolish. Him, him. Can you come and tell you that you are foolish? Him. I mean, what, what kind of country are we building? What kind of country are we building? Because of your hatred for Zoom Lion, you, you, you are calling people foolish who have paid their dues, done their work, gone through their certification, and become engineers. Do you understand what it means to become a civil engineer or what it means to become an electrical engineer? You think it's a simple matter, like all of us are not electrical engineers. You think life is your own, every day, camera, camera people, He has to apologize to the VRA. Otherwise, we will be reminding him and Kwame Kari Kari. Kwame Kari Kari must put his foot down and get this thing done. He must get this thing done. It, it behoves him, Kwame Kari Kari, to get this thing done. You can't do this. I mean, your, your selfishness and parochial interest is destroying the image of journalists. And then in the article, he says, and the award I won. Uh, what does it mean? I don't even know what that means. Finish your course in America and come and demonstrate that you are doing better work as a journalist. Don't come and issue things and then VRS says, I didn't do it. Okay. VRS says they have not issued any contract. Therefore, Zoom Lion went to fumigate on his own. You are of high praises for Ibrahim Mahama. Today, Manasseh is praising Ibrahim Mahama. Wonders will never end. But it is beautiful. We love it. <laughs> Manasseh says, Ibrahim Mahama went to uh, Mepe and did some fantastic job and etc. etc. No problem. It is great. But the irony is there. We won't talk about it. Okay. Whilst you praise Ibrahim Mahama, whom many people praise, you, because of your hatred for Zoom Lion, because you wanted to meet Zoom Lion one-on-one -on -one. many years ago, Zoom Lion said, I will not meet you one-on-one. -on -one. If I'll meet you, Paul Adamachi will be there. Robert Coleman will be there. He said, no, I want to meet you. Zoom Lion said, forget about it. I won't meet you alone. Because you have camera. You have this. You have that. You are coming to film. I'm not interested. Why did he even want to meet him? Why? Is he your friend? Is he your friend? Why did you want to meet him? Manasseh, I'm asking, why did you want to meet Zoom Lion 5? Is he your friend? Why did you want to meet him? Is he your friend? <laughs> anyway, so I'm worried because this is affecting the image of journal. That's the job that I have chosen. Many years ago, I decided which job am I choosing because I had an option. And I said, I want to do media. I prayed about it. I said, I want to do media. 
So I'm in this for the passion. I don't want people like this to be destroying the work based on cutting thieves. And now he doesn't have anything to do. He doesn't have that. Their fourth estate is collapsed to the ground. It's not working. There's nothing happening at fourth estate. It's nothing. Zero. There's not, they don't have a story. This is the only stories they have. Somebody has stolen money. Somebody has doing this. Uh, praise Ibrahim Muhammad. They, they, they don't have a story. Kwame Kaikai should be worried that the fourth estate that you set up doesn't have a story. They never have a story. And now they go and do this story. And VRA says, I did not give some lie on the contract. Well, how difficult was it? In the day of Akufuado's freedom of information, how difficult was it? In the era of Akufuado's freedom of information, how difficult was it to write to VRA and say, Mrs. VRA, this is Fourth Estate, Manasseh Azuri. Can you answer the question? Have you awarded a contract to Zoom Lion in relation to the flood and the disaster in the Volta region? VRA would have said, yes, no, it may be so, true, correct. With that, you can proceed with your story. But the hatred for Zoom Lion that is occupying his heart, if you go and look at his heart now, the color of the heart is indigo. Because of hatred, it has eaten him up. Hatred, it will not even make you succeed. Anything you do will not work. When you have hatred in your heart, hatred is of demons. Hatred is not of God. Hatred is of demons. That is why when the demons come into you with hatred, it shows in your image. It shows that you are unhappy. Let's see the Zoom Lion response statement. And then we'll end this series. And then we'll take on another friend of mine, Kisi Ajabi. <laughs> okay. Zoom Lion then issued what appears to be quite a long statement. I was wondering why is that long. But they were very angry. And it's as follows. Accra, October 30, 2023. The attention of the management of Zoom Lion Ghana Limited has been drawn to report on social media dubbed Ibrahim Mahama, Zoom Lion, and serious questions for VRA. Which stories seek to suggest that Zoom Lion Ghana Limited has been contracted by the Volta River Authority to undertake fumigation of the lower Volta areas affected by the recent controlled spillage from the Akonsombo Dam. Management categorically refused this misleading, false, and unfound unfounded assertions by one Manasseh Azuri, who has for the past 10 years sought to level various allegations against Zoom Lion to no avail. And that is correct. For the past 10 years, one person has, after, after he, the meeting failed, he has been doing this against Zoom. Zoom Lion says it's to no avail. I continue reading. This recent publication is a demonstration of Manasseh's clear disregard for journalistic integrity. That is correct. What Manasseh did is a, is a clear disregard for journalistic integrity and professional ethics as is expected of a person of his caliber. That is correct. Those lines in the Zoom Lion thing is correct. And Zoom Lion, copy the statement to Professor Kwame Kaikai, copy it to him. Copy it to Professor Kwame Kaikai and ask him that he is a journalist. Kwame Kaikai is everything journalism. Kwame Kaikai briefs it and works journalism. That's him. Ask Kwame Kaikai whether what Manasseh did is not in disregard for journalistic integrity and professional ethics, and it is not ex expected of a journalist of his caliber. Quote on, in the text, a quotation, we want to emphasize that Zoom Lion has not been contracted by VRA to undertake any fumigation activities in the said affected areas, as claimed by Mr. Wooning. His allegations are baseless and lack factual basis. It is disheartening that in his pursuit of sensationalism and cheap popularity, Mr. Awuni has chosen to misrepresent the facts. On Monday, 23rd October 2023, Zoom Lion Ghana Limited by its executive and management presented a number of relief items worth 500,000 cities to the victims of the spillage. Additionally, a sister company, Echo Zoil, also donated almost 500 life jackets to the media and rescue team supporting the situation on the ground. At the same time, presentation, at the same presentation event, the company, in addition to the items presented, announced its intention to also fumigate the areas once water had receded. It is therefore regrettable that Mr. Awuni has chosen to overlook these notable humanitarian efforts undertaken by Zoom Lion and his sister companies in support of the flood victims, a gesture which was widely covered by various media outlets, yet Mr. Awuni chose to disregard these facts and propagate misleading information and peddle his unusual falsehood against one company that has been at the forefront of keeping Ghana clean, green, and healthy. And this is deeply concerning. Management wishes to challenge Mr. Awuni to provide evidence, thank you, to substantiate his claims and allegations regarding the alleged contract awarded 
to the company. We remain unwavering in our commitment to upholding our corporate social responsibility and providing steadfast support, etc., etc., etc. Our responsibility here will be to remind Manasseh, in the absence of a formal apology to VRA, to produce the document. We are going to remind him every week. Where is the contract that was signed between Zoom Lion and VRA? He should produce it. He should write. With Akufado has given him freedom of information. John Mahama didn't do it. President Kufo didn't do it. Professor Mills didn't do it. Akufuado did it. Freedom of information. The bill, and, and lawyers understand what I'm talking about. Parliamentarians understand. That bill had been working in parliament. Viewers, you see, what happens is that when a bill goes to parliament, over the term of the parliament, if it doesn't succeed, it ends its life. It has to start again. This freedom of information bill has been in parliament since Kufo. Kufo 1, it didn't happen. Kufo 2, it didn't happen. Mills 1, it didn't happen. John Dramani Mahama, it didn't happen. Akufuado, it happened. Towards the end of Akufado's first term, he asked us, but where is the freedom of information? And he told them, it's not in my era, a human rights lawyer, that I refuse to pass freedom of information. Parliament must pass it. And it has now been passed. They use it as if they've forgotten the foundation of the law. They are gaga -ga -ga about freedom of information, and they've forgotten who is the owner of the freedom of information. Which president had the boldness, the, the confidence, and the anti-corruption instincts to push the freedom of information? Today, Akufado has given it to you so that journalists can work better. Journalists can work with more authority. Journalists can work with more tact, gusto, style. So you, can, you don't have to worry about what we used to worry about in those days. You have to sneak and find out. You can write to VRA. Say, Freedom of Information, VRA, show me. Do you have a contract with Zoom Lion or not? That's all you need to do. And you will find it. You don't need to come and publish that VRA has a contract and call the VRA people foolish. Manasseh Azuri is calling engineers foolish. Do you know what it takes to become a VR engineer? Call them fully. You, Manasseh. I'm sure if they give him DYDX to manage cry, he can't manage DYDX. But he says the engineers are foolish. That is how Ghana is. We are all human beings. No respect for anybody's achievement. Because you are, we are, you, we are, if you achieve, you're a thief. Everybody, you achieve, you're a thief. No respect for achievement. Because the people down there, they want all of us to come down there. They don't achieve nothing. They just talk about people. They don't achieve anything. They just talk about people. The young people who are coming, you don't want that. And I interact with them a lot. In the next 10 years, you will see an outpouring of brilliant young Ghanaians who will understand that this is crass. This is not journalism. You can dislike Zoom Lion, no problem. But if you want to make a case Zoom, against Zoom Lion, you have to have an effort, to, a document to do it because you are public and you're going to put the thing out. If they bring an action in law against you right now, you will say they are harassing him. We are going to remind him. Whilst we talk about that, Oliver Vomaho, Vomaho, he said a few weeks that he has a video of Kandapa offering him one million. It's been one month now. Video hasn't come. If the video has Yamutu, he should tell us. He said that he has a video. We'll come to him later on. But uh, this is our Manasseh story. Uh, we don't want to say too much. It's uh, half past, uh, it's gone beyond half past 10 right now. Uh, so we'll just uh, deal with it and continue. He said that means our next story. We have to celebrate Precept tonight. Let's see whether you have text messages on uh, this one. Do you have text messages yet? Okay, I think, uh, who's ready, Fatty? Okay, Fatty, let's take you now. Okay. This is coming from Dustin Cohn and he says, people like Manasseh only rides gullible for attention when their journalism is sinking. Coming from Samuel or for Subai, he says, bravo, Paul. If we have four of your type to sanitize the erroneous works of the journalism in our community, truth and integrity will prevail. Coming from Abubakar Sadiq Ijisu. He says, the likes of um, Manasseh does their work with no facts. I think they don't know the ethics of journalism. Coming from Isaac Ousubwaten, he says, Zoom Lion should take him to court. At least he said a contract has been awarded to Zoom Lion. He should come with this evidence. He has to learn to. And this is coming from Lord Fred Awuni. He says, some of the journalism in Ghana think they have sense than anyone in this country. How can you say someone is intellect, someone's intellect is foolishness? What makes him think he's sensible either in the relation to what he's saying? If people attack you for this, you will say journalists are under attack in this country. GJM must teach its students manners and how to communicate or report their news. You guys are sometimes irritating and sparks the anger of some of us. We love your work, so you guys too must show respect in your submission. 
Thank you. And lastly, coming from Mashu Diakobi says, what shows VRA is telling the truth? Antoinette. So here is a long read from Safiano Adams. Watching you live from Pusiga. Thanks for tuning in. Good evening, Paul and your crew. I think that as a country, we have allowed ourselves to be served with below the bar journalistic standards for far too long. What can enter a journalist to describe a big government agency like the VRA, which has vast experienced technocrats who are experts in their areas of field in such unfortunate and arrogant terms? But thankfully, we have the likes of you, Paul, and some other few calling out such cars and letting people know how poor they are in the field of journalism. Greetings to my incoming Pusika Zungu and Ping. Original Ahajis also says, um, but I heard that it was said by the VRA spokesperson on tape, even though there is no direct document. Um, Franco Ewa also says that Azuri should apologize to the VRA. Baba Wahala, I'm just here to enjoy the fact findings, Apostle Paul. Guma Alex says, I think the little brains will always resort to insult instead of intellectual debate. As you should learn to be polite in his right apps. Thank you, Paul, for speaking the truth to some of your colleagues who are not ready to learn. Lastly, Philip says, Paul, the problem with journalism today is that some of you pretend you know everything, and so you tend to pontificate on all kinds of issues without knowing jack about it. No evidence, just stringing words together. Manasseh has no analytical prowess. How are these guys senior journalists at all? And I repeat, how? And lastly, Don Chrissy Pedro says, some of these journalists feel so powerful and arrogant in this country. God help us. Angelo. We have from Elder Saki uh, watching us from Kumasi. He says, good evening, Ghana, good evening, Paul, and good evening to the team. I can't wait to celebrate my 33rd wedding anniversary with Dr. Mahmoud Baumia on Saturday, 4th November 2020. I think it means the two events will be concurrent. Uh, we also <laughs> have... <laughs> it, it looks like his. That's... Hey, wow, we have to congratulate him, man. That's, he's called Elder Saki. Well, is he going to write a book about it? Uh, <laughs> I think he's going to help other people who are married to be Maybe. married for 33 years. Congratulations good. to him. Real congratulations. What's his name? Elder Saki. Elder Saki. Yeah. Many, many congratulations to you, man. This is three years of marriage. Amazing. And we are delighted that you watch our show. Uh, congrats. Congrats, Elder Saki. Okay, go on, Mikael. Yeah, so Desmond from Don Cookroom says, Paul, I think you are making this gentleman popular by showing his picture and spending precious time to talk about him. I know you have better things to teach us about... Uh, let's ignore such people. So from Kasua Republic, this message says, Paul, a statistician will say Manasseh's attitude towards journalism is statistically insignificant. Well, we trust your word on that. In fact, he must render an unqualified apology to the VRA. And Ahmed from Tamale says, uh, Zoom line on Dr. Sh Dr. Xiao should drag him to court to curtail his perpetual blight. Oh, I, I'm not reading the rest of it. Anyway, back to you, Paul. All right, so uh, we get on to the next story. Thank you very much, viewers, for staying with us. But, Mikael, can you read some of the live presenter mentions we have? Uh, they help us pay our bills, you see, so we have to, uh, and they want our viewers to hear about them. Okay, so read at least three of them. Sure. Yeah, so uh, from our sponsors, firstly, Black Star Press Limited, and they say, inside Black Star Press Limited, we grow businesses inside the inventive minds, evolving concepts and the creative trends. Black Star Press Limited is the printing press you need now. Witness the beauty, diversity, and natural wonder with our works. Call us now on 0200-880000 for all your print works. Black Star Press Limited, a worldwide reputation for quality printing. We also have from our friends at Betway, and they say, I guess so cool. Betway's cash out just got way better. Our enhanced early, partial, and auto cash out feature lets you cash out your bets early, cash out a portion of your ongoing bets, or even set your best to cash out automatically. Sign up today at betway.com.gh. Terms and conditions do apply. This is regulated by the Gaming Commission of Ghana. As always, no under 18 betting. Uh, Betway get way more. And also from our friends at Armin Alternative Medical Hospital. Uh, they are the first to modernize herbal and homeopathy medicine in Ghana. Now, with our trained and experienced medical practitioners from KNUST, combined with state-of-the-art medical equipment, every hidden ailment will be diagnosed with ease and treatment given in no time. Your life is precious, so secure a good health with Almond Alternative Medical Hospital. Working hours are from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Saturday, and on Sundays, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Now, locate us at Clagon on the Lashibi Ashaiman Road near the Underbridge. Book an appointment with us on 0207 229 
505-0244-227-192. I'm in Alternative Medical Hospital. God is the healer. Back to you, Paul. Okay, so um, that's where we are. Let me get back onto the touch screen, and then uh, we have to get ready to show you the Presec montage uh, for which we celebrate our young men uh, in the school. So the, the, um, the uh, Electoral Commission document, as I was talking about it, uh, uh, Reverend Mauli uh, sent it to me and said that, oh, it's not complicated. You can look at it. I love my viewers. They, they, they always want to help make my program better. So they send me texts about what you've done wrong. They send me texts about what you've done right. They send me texts about, it's okay. You have said enough about it. It's okay. I get all that all the time, and I'm just delighted. Half of those people, I don't know them. A text just comes in. Paul, I'm watching you. I think you've said enough. It's okay. Leave it. Can you go to the next topic? I read all of those things, and I'm totally delighted about that. So I have been told by Reverend Maoli that it's not a big deal. You can read it. It's not, it's not complicated. So I just sent a text to Kweku and said, put the electoral commission thing on. Maoli says I can read it. It's fine. All right. So here it is. Uh, creation of uh, the commission, the electoral commission, okay, it's 31st October, creation of 25 constituencies. The attention of the Electoral Commission has been drawn to a statement in the media to the effect that 25 new constituencies are going to be created ahead of 2024 general election. Is that even possible? I mean, if you look at something like that, how many months are we away from? Is it the process has to go through to create new districts? It's quite a complicated process constitutionally. It's not possible to do that between now and December next year, I doubt. But anyway, the Commission wishes to state for the information of the general public that it is only creating one constituency, which is the Goan constituency in the OT region. The commission has not taken any decision on creating constituencies beyond that of the Goan constituency. We urge the general public to disregard, and the, the statement is signed by Michael Boydou, the acting head of public relations of the EC. So the EC says they're going to uh, create Goan. Goan, you can, your guess is as good as my viewers. You know what Goan is going to be. Goan is going to be Lolobi, Akpafu, uh, them, our friends, Franklin Kujo's people. Uh, they are friends. So they're going to create a constitution. It was quite unfortunate in 2020 that they didn't have a constitution. Sal, Sal, that's uh, what's Sal again? Lolobi Akpafu, and uh, there's another one. Just remind me. Likwe? Yes, correct. The, uh, the L is Likwe. The S is Santrofi, Santro Kofi. The S is Santro Kofi, and the A is Akpafu, and then Lolobi and Likwe. Yes, correct. Santro Kofi, Akpafu, Lolobi, and Likwe. They are the uh, constituencies to be given. They are the towns to be given a constituency in Guan. Kofi Adams, where are you, my friend Kofi Adams? Former Deputy General Secretary of the NDC. I've not seen you in a very long time. Oh, good guy. Good guy, Kofi Adams. He was one of the, if there was anybody who was more, uh, there, there's not many people who are more loyal to fly left and right than Kofi Adams. And I used to engage with him back in the day until he became a member of parliament. Kofi Adams, you can add it to your constituency, shouldn't you? Or do you want to move away and contest for that one? Uh, but you've not been in touch in a while, Kofi. Give, give me a call. Give me a call. Let's have a chat. <laughs> okay. So uh, that's good. All right. Thank you very much. So Kisa Ajabin says that Charles Edouboyen has done no wrong. I'm happy about that because as I said in the beginning, everyone who knows Charles Edouboyen from Achimota School and to his life at Lagos knows that he's a man of integrity. Everyone who knows Professor Edouboyen knows that Professor Edouboyen, the way he raises children, integrity is key. Work hard, become somebody big, but integrity is key. So we all know that Charles Edouboyen is a man of integrity. When he was made Minister of Finance, everybody relaxed that you can put Charles in charge of finance and the money will be fine. He knows how to create money. He knows how to double money. He knows how to make arguments for borrowing. He knows how to stabilize an economy. He knows how to find money for free SHS. Charles knows how to do that. He's a serious investment banker. His background, by the way, is chemistry. That's what he learned. Charles is science. It's chemistry. And then he went to learn investment banking. So people who know Charles know that he's a man of integrity. When we saw that video, we knew that once again, these are the kinds of things they do. As Jean Provocateur, they tell you collect money. Charles comes to a video and they said, collect money for your transport. And then Charles says in the video, but that's quite a lot of money for transport. No, shopping, they said. They said, collect money for shopping. Charles says, ah, but that's a lot of money for shopping. And they said, yeah, it's for you. He said, oh, okay, no problem. It is possible that he took the money and gave half to somebody, gave quarter to somebody, gave. Charles is like that. But they gave him money. They said, they didn't say, take this money and give us a contract. They didn't say, we're giving you this money to influence you to give us a contract. They didn't say that, oh, take this money, then when we get a contract, this is 40, then we'll pay you another. No. They said, Mr. Minister, take this for your shopping whilst you're in Dubai. And then in the video, he says, hey, all this money for shopping? They said, yes. And then he says, okay. And then Anas is celebrated as the hero for having some 
Arab man he picks from the streets and puts him in some room and tell people that uh, call it Anas, celebrated uh, Anas's lawyer is who? Kisi Ajabin. And, and then Kisi Ajabin says, the president says, okay, Office of Special Prosecutor, have a look at it. One year. One whole year. He doesn't do anything. He comes out after one year and says, oh, I've seen the video. Uh, Charles was not corrupt. No, 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 no. Charles Edubwine was not corrupt at all. Oh, he was only doing influence peddling. And that takes you 12 calendar months to come out. You have to have Good Evening Ghana sounding the notice board every evening. Where is the Charles Edubwine report? I've been sitting here saying it. Where is the Charles Edubwine? Where you have spent money on it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? After that, where is it? Nah, no. He comes to say that, oh, it, it was not corruption. The thing he said, he saw it the first time he watched the video. In fact, he didn't have to watch it. He knew about the video. Kisi Ajabe knew about the video. He knew it. What I, when I say he knew, he knew that it had been filmed. He knew before all of us knew. He was there before all of us knew it. So he actually knows all the circumstances. But granted, he's a, officer, he's a special prosecutor. He's a lawyer. He has to see the evidence, assess it, write a report. Granted. This evidence that he's talking about, video, money, get 40,000. What is it? Shopping. All this money for shopping, yes. What happened? Did you give them the license for bank? No. The people didn't show up again. How long does it take one to find out that this is not corruption? One year. I have to give credit to all my production team, who always remind me that, like he said, I mean, thing, he hasn't done it all. Then I'll check. And that's the, that's it. I always will check. Call the office of Chelsea Dubwine. Call the office of Special Prosecutor. Call the office of the Attorney General. Has Kisia Jabin, the office of Special Prosecutor, released the Chelsea Dubwine report? Attorney General says, not that I know of. Office of Chelsea Dubwine says, no, I haven't. Office of Special Prosecutor says, oh, no, Paul, we haven't done it. We are still on it. You two, you are worrying us with this thing. Every day I are calling it. That's what I get all the time. I call them. Have you guys done the Chelsea Dubwine? They say, oh, you two. The boss is not in town. And I say, but your boss, every day he's not in town. Why does he do the work from China? Does he do the work from Pretoria? Every day, not every day. If you like, call the office tomorrow, he's not in town. How many court sittings have happened to see that part? He's not in town. About six court sittings, he's not in town. Call the office, he's not in town. Where is he? He's in America with Ghana police. He's in China with Ghana police. He's in Dubai with Ghana police. He's in Pretoria with Ghana police. Every day, he's not in town. If you like, tomorrow, call OSP's office. If tomorrow, call. He is not in town. They'll come to court on Thursday or Wednesday. Oh, oh my, my Lord, where is it? Oh, my Lord, he's, uh, my Lord, he's not there. He's every day, he's not in town. Every day, Kisai Jabin is not in town. And then after one year, you come and tell us that Charles Edubwine is not corrupt. What is the point? After one year, you're spending so much time and money. As for the money matter, we shall talk about it another day. But we shall talk about it. Don't worry. We are just waiting. We don't want to talk and somebody comes and says nothing. So we are getting there little by little. The day we come here and we write figures on the screen, you will know that we have laid our hands on it. This work, we've been doing it for 20 years. Some people came to do it after 20 years. Some people did it before the 20 years, and they are still doing it. They are our seniors. But we will demonstrate that the 20 years is not wasted in news reporting, in journalism, in gathering facts. It's not wasted. We will, we will come to that, and I'm insisting. So much time and money has been spent on the Charles Edouard matter. What did Kisia Jabin say, by the way? Report of investigations into alleged commission of corruption and corruption-related offenses involving Charles Edouard, 30th October. The allegations against Mr. Edouard are situated in the context of an undercover investigative journalism type of sting operations, whatever that means. What, what is this? The allegations of Mr. Edouard are situated in the context of an undercover investigative journalistic type of sting operation. They find some words for themselves. And, oh, Charlie. Typically, a sting operation takes the form of... Is he the one who has been doing the sting operation or he's found the meaning in dictionary and is telling us? Is he the one who conducts the sting operation? Okay, typically, a sting operation takes the form of the creation of a platform or opportunity for persons believed or suspected to be disposed to or involved in the commission of a crime to actually commit the crime. Okay, he's covering up for the Ajahn Provocateur. That's what he's covering up for. Thus, providing hard evidence for their successful prosecution and punishment. Okay, so what happened to the sting operation? Let's move on. In the context of the undercover investigative journalism, sting operations are usually characterized by feigning of interest 
in a matter by undercover agents and the provision by them of opportunities for the commission of prohibited acts by the person of interest through winning the confidence of the person of interest for the person of interest to reveal his or her criminal activities or for the person of interest to commit a crime. The undercover investigation, the undercover agent usually secretly audio visually records the acts of the person of interest as evidence of their criminal culpability. I, I don't even want to say certain. The undercover, invest, the undercover agents usually secretly audio visually records the acts of the person of interest as evidence of their criminal culpability. Entrapment entails trickling of an... I, what is this? Please, viewers, what is, what is he saying? What, what is he talking about? He's trying to find an excuse to cover up the dastardly work that was done by his people. That's what Kisei Ajabi is doing. Nobody should take this from him. We are not building a country that is owned by Kisei Ajabi and two or three people. We are building a country that is owned by all the 30 million Ghanaians. You go and do this silly thing and you come and try and cover it up with state letterhead. What is wrong with him? What is the meaning of all this you are pouring over there? You go and do a jump over You are covering up for the dastardly and crass work that was done by your friends in a Dubai hotel, picking some Dubai guy from the street, as Kennedy Japan would say. Stop defending such work. Kisi Ajabi, we are not going to accept that you and your two, three friends don't run Ghana. What is he talking about? Well, what is this? Spending time, the special prosecutor is spending time to explain the journalistic operation that occurred. Who cares about that? And then he finishes and says, Charles Edubon is not guilty. Let's see how he wriggles himself out of the early paragraphs where he's trying to present an indefensible defense to the crass work that was done in a Dubai hotel by some Arab walking on the streets. The OSP welcomes and encourages Tingo. Why would he not welcome it? Why would he not welcome it? Including the undercover investigative journalistic type. Please, please, please. So maybe I can understand. I understand Kisai Dabe now. I think I get him. This is the reason why he couldn't release the reports. Because if he released the reports, and the report was only going to take him to only one conclusion, that Charles Edouard he was not guilty. If he does that, he would have undermined the work of his friends. So for one year, he's been preparing these first paragraphs. How does he defend the work of his friends? And yet, come to the conclusion that Charles Edouard is not guilty. Now I understand him. I'm getting there. I get Kisia Dabe's mind now. I am into his mind now. What he was struggling to do was to issue a report that Charles Edouard was not guilty, which report will naturally cast a slay on the work that was done by Anas Aremia or Ma, Anas. In the circumstances, Charles Edouard needed to defend the work of Anas Aremia Anas. It is not possible to defend the work of Anas Aremia Anas in the context of Charles Edouard, and yet, Claire Charles said one hint that he's not guilty. Viewers, are we, are we understanding it? We are getting somewhere. It, was not, it is not possible, any, intellectually possible, unless you use intellectual sophistry. The literature people know what I'm talking about. Unless you use intellectual sophistry, it is not possible, logically and legitimately, to find Charles said one not guilty and yet not cast a slayer on the work that was done by Aramea Anas in respect of the Charles said one context only. I'm not talking about the rest of Anas's work. I don't know about that. I'm talking about the Charles Edu one That context, that video that was showed, it is not possible to come to the conclusion that Charles Edu one is not guilty, and yet that you don't cast a slayer on Anas's work. This is the reason why we have waited for one year. Because for one year, they were trying hard to see how they present this work without casting a slayer on Anas's work. That which was impossible. If we didn't mount the pressure we did here, they would have kept the report and not said anything. Because there's nothing to say. You can't say Charles Edouard is not guilty, and yet you say Anasa. So that's what he's been doing. That's why he says the OSP welcomes the, 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 the work of some sting, something, something, sting, something. Okay. This is so, he says, especially because corruption and corruption-related activities are extremely difficult to detect and prove. The traditional methods of pen and paper investigations are attended by debilitating limitations in the fight against corruption and in gaining access to the operations, the Airbus scandal. That's which the Office of Special Prosecutor was investigating. That's which Kisi Ajabi inherited and said he was going to investigate. Was there a sting operation before the Airbus? Was it not the documents that were used? Is it not just the documents that the Airbus company put together and determined that they may have been wrongdoing somewhere? 
Was there sting operation? Sting. Oh, I see. That's a new word. Viewers, please Google it. Eh? Sting operation. The OSP says he welcomes the sting operation. Sting. This is so, especially because corruption and corruption-related activities are extremely difficult to detect and prove. The traditional methods of pen and paper investigations, please, let's throw it away. Con uh, okay, Mr. Dubai was not a straightforward matter. Initially, he was altogether unreceptive of the idea of meeting with the supposed representative of the AI, Barack Bank. Subsequently, he softened his stance and he suggested a meeting in Accra. The undercover agents demurred. They insisted on a meeting in Dubai. Eventually, Mr. Dubai agreed to meet with the supposed representatives of the Al Baraka Banking Group in Dubai by taking a brief detour to Dubai on his way to Singapore on official government business. There was nothing remarkable about this meeting, and had it ended there, this matter would have come up for this matter would not have come up for investigation by the OSP. OSP, remember, it was sent to you by president. So stop these things. However. The undercover agent had other de designs. It turned out that the meeting was masterfully staged as a mere official's preparatory sideshow to set the tone for the second meeting. At the second meeting, the supposed wealthy sheikh expressed his desire of investing about half a billion United States dollars in Africa. He indicated that Ghana was one of the countries, blah, blah, blah. Where is the, where is the thing? In the high political office he occupied, it ought to it ought reasonably to have occurred to Mr. Dubwahi that his bargain for 20% of the value of the proposed investment and his receipt of cash of 40,000 United States dollars from the supposed sheikh was outrightly improper. Mr. Dubwahi exhibited lack of sound judgment. His claim that he accepted the cash gift to avoid offending the supposed sheikh lies very thinly. And his suggestion of the payment of an appearance fee of 200,000 United States dollars to the vice president was quite reckless, especially as the vice president was unaware of the business he was conducting. Okay. All the indices point to the conclusion that Mr. Dubois' principal motivation was his own personal gain through his, what, intim intimated to the, what is he saying? The conduct of Mr. Dubois amounts to trading in influence or influence peddling. This is the practice of using one's influence, influence or connections in public office or with persons in public office to obtain favors or preferential treatment for oneself. Or what was he saying? These acts have not been specifically prohibited in our jurisdiction as crimes per se. However, they are generally gravely frowned upon and punishable as crimes in some jurisdictions. This is because such acts are closely associated with corruption offenses like using public office for profit and they also form the building blocks of general corruption. Though the conduct of Mr. Dubai amounts to trading in influence or influence peddling, which is closely associated with corruption, there is no actual criminal prohibition of his acts in, in respect of which the OSP has a mandate for further action. He says, though the conduct of Mr. Dubai amounts to the trading of influence or influence peddling, which is closely associated with corruption, there is no actual criminal prohibition of his acts in respect of which the OSP has a mandate for further action. On that reckoning, the special prosecutor directs the closure at this time of the investigations in respect of allegations of corruption and corruption-related offenses involved, which are Sidhu Bohens contained in the investigative documentary titled Galamsey Economy, published by Tiger Eye. The investigation may be reopened to the circumstances and the further facts. Please. Okay. One down, several to go. Uh, the Office of the Special Prosecutor has listed some 200 cases that they are looking at. It has taken one year to do the Charles Edouard. We don't know what is, how many years it's going to take to do the 19 or 20 others. We know that uh, La Bianca was done. We are on that matter as well. Don't worry. We are on the La, La Bianca matter is done and it's over. We are going back. We are listening to people and we are pushing towards it. It will come. It's, it's coming. It will come. Don't worry. We want people who hold office in Ghana to have integrity. Everybody likes business. I like business. Everybody likes business. But let's do it in such a way that it's done well. That's all I'll say. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, let's go to our text messages. It's now 11 o'clock, and then we can celebrate. Uh, Prisek, how long is a montage? Please ask them how long is a montage, and let's see. Let's get a text message from now, and then maybe. We have a, we have a, a commercial break. Or oh, we do have a commercial break. Do we have? Ah, okay, okay. Let's do the text messages then. 
All right, this is coming from Guma, and he says, Paul, I like you a lot, but today you are hitting him too hard. Silly, as he said, is too hard for OSP, and I think for the sake of some of us, your viewers, it should not come from you. This is coming from Eva Sapoin says, I really love the way Apostle Paul tackle issues. Wow, very brilliant. In fact, watching you has made me develop a lot of love for the media. Coming from Francis Mans, I says, Good evening, Paul. I said the other day that the OSP peace office itself is needless so don't worry the next government whether ndc or npp should take critical look at their operations it's a waste of take payers money and lastly coming from next and Tamai says manasseh is not only suffering from delusion of self grand door but in addition bitterness and jealousy he needs to purge himself from these things before calamity strikes Antoinette. Elon Kwame Phillips says, so here is my problem with the NASA's so-called investigative work. It's like dangling a piece of fried fish in front of a cat. The cat falls for your enticement, then you secretly record the cat to show to the world that the cat is corrupt and guilty of stealing a piece of fried fish. Why tempt the cat your fried fish bait in the first place? Nanawusu says this cell constituency creation, if it is in the Ashanti region, you could hear some noise coming from the left and the right. Now the people are quiet, no comments from the CSOs, and some noisy media and NDC people calling themselves academias. Nitete says, Paul, the engineer Kwame Osei Mensa at the VRA who said on live radio that they have awarded a contract to Zoom Lion is around. I think now they have retracted their statement so why blame azuri for such publish and then john kindo wrote his comment in uh, mandarin um should i read it in mandarin i should okay um Okay, um, ni hao, shundi baolo, ni shi, wo shi jie mu de ri xin guan zhong, zui jing wo guan che de ju yi dao ni men de jie mu, jiao dian tong zheng da zheng zhe gu shi de zhuan xiang ren wu, wo shen zai wei lai de ao shi nian li xiang wo de hai zi, jie shao ni men de yan chu, yin ci qin bao chi zhuan zhu bu guo, qin wen shundi shen ma shi hao ke yi zhe dao, um, He's literally just um, asking about the Israeli-Palestinian war, and he wanted to ask if um, Bello would be available to give us analysis on that. He also wanted to know if it would affect us just like the um, Russian-Ukrainian war. Angelo. Continuing in English, Master Planner Julia says, Paul, you seem to know Manasseh Azure Pau. Uh, he, couldn't, he couldn't cross the line. How well, perhaps he was offside. Thank you for this factual program. Albert Fubakra says, Hi, good evening, Paul. Can Idubahin sue, sue Anas because he's projected him in the video as a corrupt official and now the OSP says he wasn't involved in any corrupt practices? Ufi Pounds from Manyatigo Paul says, I always deem it a great joy whenever I watch you, Paul. You have no idea how I wish to be like you. I don't know how, but I wish to meet you one day. You're my true mentor. Well, Ufi Pounds, maybe you might meet him at a program or so. Uh, Isaac Kamerni Akwete says, but what we're hearing now regarding the clearance of Honorable Charles Adibuahin, the former Deputy Minister of Finance, what would become of the already sinking image of the Tiger IPI uh, led by Anas and his crew? And what legal remedies are available to Honorable Adibuahin to purge his image of the unfortunate tag? And then continuing with the rest of the messages from our sponsors, we have from our friends at Lifts and Elevators, and they say, enjoy the fruits of your labor, they say. As humans, aging and physical infirmities stand in the way of enjoying our mansions and homes. Uh, worry no more because with portable American pneumatic vacuum elevators, PVEs, you are sure of unlimited enjoyment of your mansions and homes. Uh, visit Lifts and Elevators Ghana at Sakumono for your solutions and free consultations. Now call us, write the number down, 0200-535-515 or email us at elevatorsgh.gmail.com. Also from our friends at the Makers Electronics Company Limited, they say it's the Blessing Attack promo. For us to the Makers Electronics Company Limited for up to 67% discount on selected appliances such as Samsung, LG, Moved, Nasco, TCL, Madea, and Toshiba. 
Now visit our showrooms at Taifa Burkina Highway, uh, Amasa Manzogo Junction, Oyarifa Teman Boga Junction, Kaswa New Market, Ashaiman Valko Flat, Kumasi Ahenema Kokobing, Takrade Efia Kuma Number 9 Market, and call us on 055 2222253 or 055 Makers Electronics Limited, large and in charge with quality but affordable home appliances and consumer electronics in terms and conditions to apply. And lastly, from our friends on Adam Autofix, they say they're the biggest car service center here in Ghana and they offer a wide range of auto services in real time. We have trained uh, well staff in various departments such as auto mechanic, auto electrician, straighteners, welders, sprays, and body works. And Adam Autofix will offer 247 towing services to all our clients so we can conveniently bring your immovable car to our service center. Our services include car diagnostics, mechanical works, auto servicing, and oil change, alignment and balancing, body works and spraying, car detailing, steam engine wash, and sale of car batteries. And they have in stock car tires of all rim sizes at wholesale and realty price. Uh, work 247 so you can drive through anytime. Now we're located at Dan Soman Astoria Downhill, directly opposite Dan Soman KFC. And call us on 055. A three zero, A three four zero. Thank you. That's it from our sponsors. Back to you, Paul. Okay. So now uh, on Thursday we'll have our, our friends in the school. I was going to. Oh, I should have been wearing this when Mikhail was reading. I'm wearing it. Okay. Thursday I'm going to have a full swing. Uh, I said I was going to talk about uh, uh, some people who had helped to build the image of the school. I'll do that on Thursday. I'll get a photograph, a collage of photographs for you, so we can celebrate them. Some of them have died, but they did a lot for the school. They did a lot for all of us uh, back in the day. And uh, as we keep saying, all of us who went to Presec, we like our own houses, and we think that our house is the best house in Engman House, and it is truly the best. And uh, Mikhail, what house were you in? Throughout. Oh, you were in residence Yeah, you told me that. Okay, okay, okay. So you have to choose a house. You choose Engman House, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Here's a congratulatory montage for the gallant Presecans. I said it when I came here in 2018, and I'll repeat it. This school has become for me and for many Ghanaians one of the best senior high schools, if not the best, in Ghana. Only Earth Preset to break the eight in this year's competition. And now we celebrate and hand over the trophy for the National Science and Mass Quiz. to break the eight in this year's competition. And now, we celebrate and hand over the trophy for the National Science and Mass Quiz! Montage, uh, uh, Tarek, very good work, very, very good work. Thank you, Kweku, also for 
uh, looking at it. But that's very, very good editing work. We have the best here in Good Evening Ghana, isn't it? I don't think any TV station since Presec One has produced a montage that I, I'm challenging you viewers. Tomorrow I'll put this on Facebook. Show me which station has produced a montage for Presec like this one. You won't get it anywhere. The skill is here. Because we work hard, we develop it, we make it happen. Have you seen how we've put the president's speech together? This, that, that. Yeah, that's what we do here. We are hard working because we want to raise the name of journalism. Don't you, don't you like this month? Even if you didn't go to Presec. Even John, tomorrow, I'll send it to John Domelo, by the way. I'll send it to him. Even John Domelo will like this. Even him who said that we will never win will like this. That's journalism. It's beautiful, isn't it? Let's make it happen. Let's make it well. Let's make it great. Let's make it beautiful. Okay, without much ado now, all done. Thursday is going to be brutal. That's the last show before the 4th of November. Canada Japan says 800 million somewhere. All the matters is coming to a head on this table on Thursday. That's it for Good Evening Ghana. Thank you very much for watching. And thank you, Prisek, for taking away my misery of the weekend. It's a pleasure to be back. Good night.